Hi, I'm Mark, coming to you from Baker Screen Acres. Uh, it is the 14th day of February, and I thought it was about time that I gave you a, a sit rep on what the situation is right now. Um, just to clarify a few things, we had to um, put down about 15 of our sows. They were getting ready to farrow in about 15, in about 45 days, and um, we just have we have no resolution on this yet, and we just could not afford that many more mouths to feed. So what we did is we slaughtered them here on the farm, and we distributed that meat uh, right after Christmas. So that's done, and there's nothing we can do about that. Um, so we still have ten moms, and they've farrowed here recently. So you know the numbers build relatively quick. Um, we receive sufficient donations to keep that number of pigs till spring. Um, unfortunately, uh, we're being told now that we don't go to court until November. Uh, yeah, isn't that nice? So anyway, um, I, I, I've got to say to you that after all this time in, in the legal process, uh, I'm not sure at this point if that was the best route to go. I, I, it was the one that presented itself and that's what we did. And we will finish it in that realm. Um, but there's been a lot of frustration, a lot of holdups, um, a lot of stalling, sandbagging I'd say on the part of the state. And here we are going back to the state and asking them to resolve the problem for us. I don't think they're going to. But um, we're going to give it a valiant effort. Uh, everything's fine here, everyone's fine, safe, happy, healthy, and all that good stuff. We have snow on the ground, it's cold out, and we are, we're going to get through though. We see winter's turn and we're going to be okay. Now, with my statement about how the legal thing goes, you really got to ask yourself the question, all right, what's the answer to this? Um, what's the answer to industrial ag taking over and limiting our choices of food. I think I have an answer for you. I've long said since we started this process that anyone can farm and you should. I say that. And anyone can farm is a phrase that was born out of that movie Ratatouille where the, the chef, the dead chef said anyone can cook and then actually a, a rat winds up being the the famed cook of this uh, place in France, you know, he's standing on the head of a, a dishwasher. And that's where it came from. It was just something that came up around the campfire about eh, about two years ago now. Uh, anyone can farm is has taken shape. There's three or four of us that are that are considered staff on this now. My wife, me, a uh, guy by the name of Tim Dewey, and a guy by the name of Kim, Kyle Miron. And uh, we've formulated a program to where we can bring people onto the farm, they can stay in residence, and then we instruct them over the course of a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on different processes like pasture poultry, rotational grazing of cattle, uh, hogs, hog harvest days, um, biochar, soils, uh, garden preparation, you know, advanced gardening, all things that we do and we kind of take for granted because it's what we do, but people want to know how to do this stuff and more importantly I think they need to know how to do this stuff and I think that is the long-term answer to the problem that we're facing. See, we could win tomorrow in court, all right, and that would be a victory in one battle, but the war would still wage and the people that are coming at us with this, you and me both, uh, they're not going to give up. Um, they're they're going to bolster it with more of their lawyers and more of their money and more influence to our politicians. That's what they'll do. That's what they always do. Um, but what can we do? What can we do? Well, I'll tell you what we can do. We can all farm. We can all grow carbohydrates and raise proteins. You don't have to have a farm like we have. Um, you could have a backyard. Um, you could have a porch. 
on your at your apartment where you can raise some tomatoes in a bucket. You could raise, raise some rabbits in your backyard, some chickens in your backyard. There's been some tremendous gains made lately about zoning and things like that, allowing people to, um, or in, empowering people to, uh, to grasp their rights to farm and, and actually do these things. And okay, our program, Anyone Can Farm, is going to help that along too. We, we hope to bring people on, well we've already done this, we've just never done it formally. Bring people on and show them all these processes. So, um, what I need people to do, what I need you to do, you've all been so faithful, um, what I need you to do is go to bakersgreenacres.com and have a look at the tab there that says anyone can farm. Go through there and see if any of those uh, classes that we're going to be offering this spring are of interest to you. If they are and you have the wherewithal to do it, sign up. Right? If you don't call me, if you don't have the wherewithal, call me. All right? um, and then what we did to help that along was yesterday we launched a program called Indiegogo. And if you go to bakersgreenacres.com, my wife put up a link this morning to Indiegogo. And Indiegogo is a platform where you can, you can put a project out there and people can look at it and if they feel as though it has merit and it's going to benefit American society, they can, they can donate to it. All right, right now I'm sitting in a house that adjoins our, the farm. Now it's part of the farm because we purchased this house. Uh, it's, it was pretty run down when we got it and we didn't pay much for it, but we're renovating it and we've started it last summer. And our plans are is to make this into a dormitory and also uh, a meeting place, you know, a place where we can uh, conduct classes before we go out to the farm to actually do the thing. Um, and uh, we've got the floors down, we've got the, the walls painted, we've got all the old carpet tore up, we've got the roof fixed. We've made a lot of gains, but we've got a long ways to go, a long ways to go. Um, just south of me from this, from this house, there's a, a driveway that goes out to a pretty remote little portion of our farm that we call a campground. And we go out there and have campfires and stuff, but we want to make that so that people can pull campers out there and trailers, whatever they want to stay in and stay, and, uh, and then come to our classes and take our classes. Now, uh, probably the most important thing that I would request people would do, and this is a long-term fix to this problem, is to go to this Indiegogo site, review what we've put up there. It was pretty well done. Tim and uh, Kyle did it. My wife helped a lot. Um, I was just the face. Review that. If you hold with what I'm saying and you see this as a long-term fix to this problem, share it. Share it with as many people as you possibly can and implore them to share it even more than that. And then partner with us. There are 8,000 people saw my last video, or probably more than that. I have no idea how far it reached, actually. If every person gave $10, imagine the money that we'd have to get this infrastructure together. It could really be a great, a really great season for anyone can farm. Now, my long-term plans is to gather data at this location this season. If we need another season then we'll do it, but I don't think we will. I think we can get everything we need this season at this location and then our plans are to every season after that plant another anyone can farm. Um, I don't know what you'd call it. I don't want to call it a franchise. I don't know, it outfit I guess. So we'd be looking for farms and looking for farmers that are that are like us, that are uh, motivated, motivated to do this and see the vision, see us in the next five years increasing the number of family farms across the United States thousandfold, more than that, because people want to do it. They just need a little help. They need to be empowered to say, hey, I can do this. You know, I can butcher a pig. I can butcher a, a chicken. I can uh, create biochar and treat my soils and, and have unbelievable uh, yields from that and everything that goes with it. We're not reinventing the wheel. This is the way it was done, you know, 75 years ago in our country, which is not that far behind us, right? 
Okay, so that's what, that's what I need you to do. I need you to get out there and share that and then partner with us. Now, there's, there's folks out there that can partner better than others. I need you to call me because we want to make this happen quickly. We've got a good team together, um, but, you know, we lack the finances to do it. I believe that this program can spread like wildfire and it can have a profound effect on our society at this point in time. You know, what has happened to my family, that's, you know, that's water under the bridge. We have just kind of uh, looked past it. You know, we still have to finish up the court case and we still have to do what we have to do as far as that goes. But we are looking past that towards a brighter future for all of us. You know, if we, if we lose this court case and we don't have a plan to go on to fight another day, then we lose and we're dead in the water. Can't let that happen. We just can't let that happen. If they thwart us this time, we're going to go to a different place and do something different. I mean, to a different farming uh, operation, do something different. And I'm not going to talk too much about that right now. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, this is the new thing that we want to do this year. And we feel led to do this for in a lot of ways. Um, we're motivated. And I would covet your input as well. If there's anyone has other ideas that think would go along with this or other resources that can make this uh, work for us. Let's say you have a farm in Arizona and you want to get an anyone can farm location going and it's not being used right now and you can you can make those resources available so this can happen. Call me or one in Vermont or one in New Hampshire. You really, really like but. Okay, uh, so that's good. Um, share it. Donate. Talk it up. And also, also, and this is big too, um, I've asked people to stand up and say, I'm a farmer, and you will not tread on me. I've asked people to do that. No one's going to ask for your credentials. Okay, how many acres do you have? Are you a farmer? No, you're a farmer if you want to be a farmer. You're a farmer if you are willing to stand and say, you will not tread on me. I am the same as uh, our forefathers that that fought at the, the North Bridge and conquered. If you want to be that person, be that person. We're going to set up a Facebook page. Social media is extremely powerful and it can work both ways. It can be, it can promote foolishness or it can really unite people. If we had 150,000 people that signed up for the Anyone Can Farm Facebook page, just was a member, just, just be a what is it? A friend on there. That's like a hammer, you know. When we say this is what we need done, you know, when we say that we don't feel we don't feel too comfortable with what, say, some lunatic state agency says that they want to do, like outlawing pigs with curly tails or straight tails, we can say no, we don't think so. That's not up yet. It'll be up by the time this goes out. So, uh, okay. I, I would encourage people to go to Anyone Can Farm Facebook page and sign up. Just get on there and that will be a place where we can make uh, you know, weekly, daily, whatever updates as to what's happening with this project, how it's moving along, and also people can communicate with us. Like let's say that you have a farm in, in New Hampshire and you want to make it an Anyone Can Farm location. You know there's going to be steps to go through of course. You can't just say I want it and then make it happen. You know we'd have to have some training and things like that because we want to make it a somewhat uniform um, organization. Of course it would be different for different parts of the country as far as the, the, the practices go, but the principles need to be quite the same and those principles are principles that I probably picked up in the military or maybe being a New Englander, I'm not sure, but it was just a a by hook or by crook attitude. We're going to make this work. Uh, if there's an obstacle in our way, we will go over it, we will go under it, or we'll go through it. And that's that's what being a farmer is. You know, we we don't have the ability to say, well, this you know this ain't working. So okay, we don't farm that day. No, we have to get it fixed. We have to overcome, adapt, and overcome. And that's a military principle as well. Okay, I don't want to make this too long. Um, Thanks a lot for your support, and when I, when I say anyone can farm, I'm asking you to be that farmer. Thanks for being with us.